Okay, so with stance here, you want to set your feet at about shoulder width apart, okay? You basically put your heels right around your shoulders. Now, if you want to have a slightly wider stance just outside your shoulders or a slightly narrower stance just inside your shoulders, those are both acceptable. But the shoulders give you the reference point. So if you want to be a little wider or a little narrower, that's just fine, but just use your shoulders as your reference point. Now, once you're in that stance or once your feet are set, we're going to break both knees. We're going to turn into our lead leg slightly, and then we're going to kind of bow forward just a little bit putting you to in what we call more of an aggressive stance or even some people have referenced it as a boxer stance. When I mount the gun, there are a couple different ways that you can do this. First way is you have your head upright, you bring the gun up to your cheek, slide it into your shoulder, and then secure your cheek down. Now, that is the by the book way to do it. If you watch me mount my gun here in a minute, I know you're going, hey, why is this guy holding a uh, stock Beretta off of the shelf? Well, this is going to be to demonstrate that a lot of the off-the-shelf guns don't fit you properly. We're going to get to that in just one second. Boy, I'll tell you what, guys, what a difference does it make to have a gun that is balanced, that fits you properly, and has the pointability of this gun. As you can see here, when I get into my stance, when I go to mount this gun, it goes right into my shoulder pocket. I can bring my cheek firmly down on the stock, and we have proper alignment without any kind of issues. In a perfect case scenario, when we set up here to shoot, again, any target, our eyes go to our look point, they're soft, they're out in the distance, they're quiet. When you call for the target, you're gonna see a blur. It's gonna be movement, an orange streak, an orange flash, whichever word you wanna use. The bottom line is when you set up, you're looking for just movement. That movement will tell you when to initiate your swing. And we're going to talk about the body rotation once we get over to station one here in a few minutes. But that's the key point in when you're going to start your swing, when that, when that flash comes into your vision field. Once it does, we're going to match gun speed with target speed. And by doing so, that's going to help our eyes go from that softer look and seeing that streak to seeing a nice, clearly defined target where we can see the rims on it. Now let's talk about our plan for low five. So our foot position, newer shooters, again, we're gonna stay the same. My advanced and intermediate shooters, if you wanna have a slight rotation from the high to the low, again, from bringing that natural aim point from the center stake back to two thirds, so be it. Even if you wanna change sides, go for it. Me personally, I like to stand on the right side for the high house and the left side for the low house. But again, to each his own. Whatever is more comfortable for you, but just keep it consistent once you find what works for you. Whole point here, third of the way out, Keep it within the window. Now again, finding that one third is you can go to your out of bounds marker, usually add about eight to 10 feet over in the flight line, and then find a marker in the background and mark that spot. Eyes here, come back about halfway or slightly more than halfway, anywhere from halfway to three quarters of the way back. As long as your eyes are not directly in the window. Let's go ahead and take a look at one over the shoulder. Ball. So as you can see over the shoulder, everything is settled before we call for the target. When the target emerges and gets to about that halfway point, you see the gun start to move. That gives me just enough time to match the speed, build in my perfect lead. And then once everything comes into focus, I'm shooting it right over two thirds. Let's give you a closer look at everything through the eye cam. Ball. So once again through the eye cam, we see that when, we, when our gun stops at the hold and it settles, the eyes shift back to the look point and, and our eyes rise up. We see the flash come into view, the gun speed starts. We build on our perfect lead, target comes into focus, boom, and we blow it up right at the two thirds. Now, before we exit over to station seven, we're gonna talk about a couple of quick prob common problems here on station six. The first problem that I usually see here, and we talked about it on two, but I'm gonna demonstrate it live here, is how the shooter has a tendency to start coming back without the second target. So what I'm gonna have Bruce do here is when we pull the double, I'm not gonna let him pull an actual double. 
I'm just gonna tell them to pull a single just to demonstrate what you'll see. So you see the shooter will come up. What you're gonna see is I'm gonna break the first target and instead of going to the hoop, I'm gonna start to loop back. And if I did that on a pair, I'm gonna be a mile in front. Paul. So how many times have you seen that at the club where someone is expecting a double and they get a single or the second target comes out broken or whatever, but as soon as that first bird breaks, boom, they're off to the races back to where they came from. They don't see anything, then they stop and pick up their head and look around like, where is the target? That's because they're shifting their eyes the wrong way, guys. We need to go to the hoop. Everything is all about the hoop, the center field, the center stake, the trap house, whatever you wanna use as your reference point. But in order to find that second target, everything needs to be out there, not coming back the other way. Now, we're gonna throw another pair here. Another problem that I'll see is shooters get off balance here. And that off balance is usually caused from the improper eye shift because they come back way in front of the target, then they have to hit the brakes, then they end up taking a step off of the station. So here we go, we're gonna shoot a pair. Well, that brings me to a question that I'm sure you may have in your head is, uh, specifically, like how do you deal with a miss? Uh, you know, a B-class shooter missing a target, eh, not a crisis, <laughs> right? right? But the level that you shoot at a miss uh, is pretty important. And the other one, like uh, a slow pull, distractions, uh, people uh, talking behind you, the different things. Uh, how do you handle that? Well, first and foremost, we need to have a system in place, a mental system or a mental routine, a series of steps or a process to follow. Such as when we were out there today, we talked about before we got on the station, we talked about our plan, where we're gonna stand, where we're gonna hold, where we're gonna look, where we wanna break the target, how we're gonna to react to the target on the flash, all those things. So we have a system or a series of steps in place of what we need to do before we get on the station, while we're on the station, and then we do a quick review, analyze the shot once we exit the station. Now, all of those things, that disrupts that process. So you catch a slow pull, target comes out broken, you hear some people talking behind you, you're shooting with a squad of people that you don't really know, and, and you're not really comfortable with the guys, whatever the case is, you happen to miss one. All of these things distract us or can potentially distract us from doing our jobs while we're on the station. Now, it's not that when I'm shooting, I'm immune to those things. It's just, and, and it's not that I'm perfect either, you know, because I still miss targets. I still let things here or there get in my head. I just don't let it happen as often as the next guy does. So it's not that I'm immune to it, but I have a system in place on how to reset, how to get my head clear and get my focus back on the task.